Uh, welcome. I'm Roseanne Hansen. Welcome to our first virtual field trip to Mars. This is going to be so much fun. Uh, I am joined today by Grace Howard. Grace, you want to say, just say hello. I don't think you're going to pop up, but just say hi. <laughs> so Grace, Grace is, is uh, my tech assistant. She'll be answering questions in the chat or helping me. Um, she'll read if you have questions read the chat to me during, um, during the program and uh, anything else you need, put that in the chat for Grace. If you don't know about the chat, it should be down at the bottom or I think it's on the side and the iPads. Um, and also Grace will be dropping some links and information and metadata into the chat from time to time. So what we'll have you do now since I'm going to get started with the presentation. So I'm going to give a, a kind of a slideshow presentation, sh show some movies. I'm gonna ask you guys to turn off your video because that maximizes um, the, the quality of the recording for those who aren't able to join me. So, um, and before I, I get too, too far down, um, let me, uh, See, I put post-it notes up next to my camera so that I remember to do things. Um, I want to talk about what, why I'm wearing this. I don't usually wear uh, fancy jewelry on Zoom, but this has a great Mars story. So this is a copper ring that was given to me by uh, a really good friend who works in the planetary, Lunar and Planetary Laboratory in Tucson, and they uh, take part in many of the um, Mars missions, many missions to space. And this was a gasket from a failed, um, so uh, they were testing gaskets for one of the, the lunar craft, or excuse me, um, uh, well, spacecraft. And um, so these gaskets failed and he grabbed me one. So I'm a, a metalsmith and, lapidary so I made this it's actually a pin and a necklace and this is rainbow hematite which we're gonna see on Mars <laughs> no it's not from Mars but um, it's really cool how many uh, minerals we have in common of course so now I'm going to get started so we'll I'll have the slideshow and then I'm going to we're going to see as much how much sketching we can get done feel free to sketch along as we go uh, although I will come back at the end and put some pictures back up and, and things so that we can um, sketch along and, and see what we can do. It's really fun to, to um, uh, create the colors that we're seeing um, because so much of the colors are um, iron oxides, which are, you know, our sienas and, and um, many of our natural uh, pigments. So I'm going to get started and great. All right. I am Roseanne Hansen. Uh, my, uh, my own work is through my Field Arts Institute uh, and Exploring Overland is my website. I am an author, a naturalist. I've been keeping field notes for my work as a, as, as a naturalist and biologist for like 37 years. And only recently really have started to really get into the, the sketching and, and uh, watercolors. Uh, I am also the art and science program coordinator for the University of Arizona's Deborah Lab Desert Laboratory on Tumamoc Hill, one of the oldest field stations in North America, actually possibly the world. So where are we going today? Well, we're going to Mars. And Mars is, if we look at the, the data from the current Curiosity mission, which left November 2011, left the Earth, it traveled 127,943,020 miles over nine months to land on Mars in the Gale Crater. And um, Grace, since I can't see the chat or anything, be sure to just, you know, something not working, just, just say out loud. Thank you. So Mars, the fourth planet from the sun, and we're going to be uh, going there. But let's look at some Mars facts first. Mars was named um, after the Roman god of war, also known as Ares in the Greek pantheon. 
So one day on Mars is approximately 24 hours, 39 minutes and 35 seconds. And it is called a soul. So a Mars year then is approximately 668 souls um, or 1.88 Earth years. <clears throat> Sorry. And the atmosphere is mostly carbon dioxide with some water vapor. So you do get clouds. And there's some really nice photos of, of some uh, Mars clouds out there. And the gravity is just 0.375 equivalent to that of Earth. So if you went to Mars, you would weigh a lot less. So if you wanna go on a diet, go to Mars. And it is known as the red planet because of the uh, presence of a lot of iron oxides in the soil, also um, called hematite um, there. And here we have uh, lots of iron oxides. We'll talk about that in a bit. So we're going to focus on two, the two active missions on Mars right now, the two rovers that are on Mars, Curiosity and Perseverance. NASA's Mars Science Laboratory is managed by the JPL, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California at the CIT, the California Institute of Technology. Interestingly, there have been 47 missions to Mars since 1960. The first um, was uh, managed by the USSR, and the vast majority failed. Um, the Mars 3 was the first to land in 1971. After relaying video to its orbiter for 20 seconds, it died. Can you imagine working on a mission like, like they do and having it die after just 20 seconds? And the landers have been um, the Viking 1 and 2, the Pathfinder, the Polar Deep Space 2, Spirit, Opportunity, Phoenix, Insight, and now Curiosity and Perseverance. And then for the very first time, we're going to have a powered flight with a helicopter called the Ingenuity. So let's look at the Curiosity, Mission Curiosity, Curiosity Rover. Uh, began in 2012 and to present is still active. And its mission is, did Mars ever have the right environmental conditions to support microbial life? Very early in its mission, it started gathering enough chemical and mineral evidence of past habitable environments, meaning the presence of water. So far, Curiosity has traveled 15.5 miles uh, Quite a, quite a feat really over these years. And its mission clock is at 3,089 souls, four hours and nine minutes as of last week when I wrote that down. A Little bit more now, of course. Let's take a listen. This is the sound of the Mars Curiosity rover driving across Mars. So you were just listening to off-roading on Mars. So now let's, let's look at the Perseverance, the Perseverance rover. Uh, the, it, it landed in, in February this year, and it has quite an interesting mission. Studying Mars habitability, seeking signs of past microbial life, the biosignatures, collecting and caching samples for future pickup. And that's crazy cool. That means it's, we're going to have a mission returning to Mars to retrieve that material and preparing for future human missions. So cool. Um, so all of this is really important to furthering the budding um, new uh, science field of astrobiology. So an extra mission within the Perseverance mission is the Ingenuity Mars helicopter. It was supposed to fly this week, but I think they had to reset a few things and it hasn't 
done it yet that I know of that I've seen in the news. So the rover has traveled since February 21.3 feet and its mission clock is at 56 souls four hours. So we're going to focus a lot more on the Curiosity and its um, area of, of exploration simply because it's just done so much more. But so one of the cool things I wanted to share with you though is how we got, what, what it takes, what it took to get these missions to Mars. So let's take a look at the Perseverance. If you didn't get to see it in February, I'm gonna share this short video here. We have deemed Perseverance ready to execute entry descent and landing on front row. Confirmation of entry interface. Perseverance is currently going 5.3 kilometers per second, about 120 kilometers from the surface of Mars. It will start controlling its path to the landing target. Okay, so like, seriously, wow, I always have to take a moment after watching that. I get all teared up. Um, it's just a reminder. It was a, I really wanted to remind us all of the human ingenuity and passion that goes into this exploration, this extra Earth, extraterrestrial exploration. And it is an amazing global team of people, incredibly diverse, lots of great, uh, and I was particularly excited seeing so many women engineers working on this, you know, back in the early days, it was all a bunch of white males, right? So I'm super excited to share this um, and the passion of, of all of this. So um, hopefully that played well for everybody. And let's now go on our own exploration here. We are going to be jumping off shortly. Okay. So we said stopping off at the moon, 238,000 miles. And now we go approximately 140 million miles to get to Mars, of course, depending on where it is in its orbit and the landing time. And we're gonna zoom in here. and take a look at, this is a really ancient uh, beat up planet, isn't it? So many craters and um, the, the topography can really just zoom, stare at this for, forever and, and see, you know, there's big plains and these, these belts where it's just been pummeled by asteroids, all those craters. And what we're looking for now 
is um, the Gale Crater, which is where uh, the Curiosity landed. And look at that, that diagonal feature there is really dramatic. Um, well, I think I went a little too high. Yep, there we go. There is Gale Crater in a, in a really interesting area. It looks like that you know, is an area that had a lot of water perhaps at some time. I imagine that's why they chose that. And that point right there where I put the, the carrot V is the Curiosity Landing Zone. And now we're going to look at, well, how far away and where did the Perseverance land? So it go way across this Isidis Planeta plain, vast plain, right on the edge of this plain is Jezero Crater. You know, was that a plain or, or was that maybe a vast ocean at one point? Because there's all these, look at the features there. See those squiggly lines? Those are ancient watercourses, rivers with meanders and a delta as well, which we're going to see uh, a little bit more closely in a bit. So let's get started with our metadata, right? Because those of you who know me and sketch with me on my field trips or in live and in person, uh, it live and online, uh, know that I always start with the metadata, right? Where are we? What are the details? so that we can um, start recording the, the Mars information and um, ground ourselves, literally. So the longitude is uh, 137.389, et cetera, degrees west and minus 4.52166 uh, degrees uh, south. So it is just, so this is Gale Crater, the uh, location here. Um, that's the landing point of, of Curiosity. Um, so it's just on the Southern Hemisphere, right? Just below the equator. And the elevation is minus 4,501 meters. That's 2.8 miles. So it's in the crater. And now some of you might be thinking, well, how do they figure elevation if there's no sea level? Um, and that was a, a question that I, I did research and it's pretty interesting, but very, I'm not quite sure of the exact how they calculated it, but basically the datum was set. So D-A-T-U-M datum, the, the baseline for elevation um, was determined by calculating the, the, the mean Martian radius, which is 3,389 kilometers, um, with the average atmospheric pressure of 6.1 millibars ended up being the datum. So where they have that pressure is where they decided was gonna be zero. So the craters at the bottom of the crater, you go down and up and, um, and that's how they did that. I'm not sure exactly how the datum is calculated but it's called the Mars Aeroid. Kind of geeked out a little bit more on that one. Um, so here's the location, um, Gale Crater in the Southern Hemisphere. The diameter of the crater is 154 kilometers, and it was named after Australian Walter Gale, an astron astronomer in the early years. So sunrise is at 5.30 a.m. Mars time, and sunset 6.30 p.m. Mars time. Um, Grace is going to be sharing all this data with you, so um, if you're not able to get it all down right now, you'll have it in the chat. So here's an interesting thing. Um, sunsets are generally blue on Mars, and that is because a vast amount of dust in the atmosphere, um, it's really windy on Mars, um, it allows the blue wavelengths, the, the longer to penetrate the atmosphere more, um, excuse me, shorter wavelength, more, more efficiently than the longer wavelength colors. So the effect is mostly a sunset. Um, the light uh, turns a really beautiful blue. So here's another beautiful shot of a blue sunset on Mars. Um, so it would be visible to us if we were there on Mars um, in this, um, 
shot, this photograph, it's slight, the redder sky is slightly exaggerated because of infrared filters. I think that's beautiful. And that's probably one of the things that I'm gonna to wanna to come back and do a, a Mars Scapito uh, sketch of because it's just beautiful. And I wanna capture that blue glow. So of course, one of the things I always do is moonrise and moon, moon set. But um, while on Mars, there's two moons. They're actually thought to be captured asteroids um, and they're named Phobos and Deimos um, after uh, Mars suns. Uh, and they were also his chariot attendants. Um, they're small, 14 miles wide uh, is Phobos and Deimos is eight miles wide. And uh, interestingly, of course, because of how close they are and their size difference, their orbits and transits are really interesting. So Phobos transits across the sky in 66 hours. It's, it's crazy. And for like, I think six times during that time, Deimos transits over and over 10 hours. So if you're there, they're gonna just look like there's these, this moon going really slow and then another one going really, really fast. It's really interesting. I couldn't get good data on uh, moon, moon rise and moon set for uh, or moon phases for these. Um, and at certain point on Mars, you can't see the moons. Um, so you got to be pretty much around the equator and not too much higher, I think, than 33, 34 latitude, I think is what I read, um, because they're so close that the curve will um, block it. So uh, Curiosity has a, um, a weather station. And so the high a few days ago was nine degrees Fahrenheit and the low was minus 105 degrees Fahrenheit. It is cold and windy. All right, let's, let's start zeroing in now. This is the landing uh, zone of Curiosity in the Gale Crater. Let's look at that a little closer. All right. Um, Grace, are there any questions so far? Nope. No, okay, good. I saw a lot of chat, so I can't really open the chat well when I'm, when I'm uh, sharing screen and, and, and um, presenting, so. All right, so this is the path. This is the map of where Curiosity has driven on its 15 some odd um, miles. And starting at the Bradbury landing point, um, it went to Yellowknife Bay, actually, and on its way to Yellowknife Bay, it analyzed its first scoops of, of soil, and it almost immediately had a mission success. One thing that they were really looking for is proving that age of, of uh, rock soils on, on Mars was determined to be 4.2 billion years old, and yet it's only been exposed on the surface for 80 million years. Now, that's really significant because um, Curiosity has the ability to do this analysis right on board. Uh, that is all these rovers from now on out have incredibly sophisticated sampling equipment, ability to analyze. It's just really just blows my mind what, what humans are capable of, of building now. So also on its path, um, it used the hand lens imager, which I just love that word, right? Because you think of a little pocket loop that us naturalists use um, to photograph and analyze hematite. Remember that is an iron oxide. And um, this is what it looked like. This is part of the sample. This is the, the photo. So the photo on the left is enhanced. It's also a composite of three different science filters. Um, that are on the mast cam. And the, the reason they did this is to show the hematite as exaggerated purple. But as you can see from my necklace, um, rainbow hematite has those colors on earth. So it's pretty interesting. Um, the photo on the right is more what it would probably look like if you were there on, on Mars with the naked eye, I think. Um, hard to say, um, but it's exciting how beautiful that is. And they're very interested in iron oxides because um, that indicates, so, uh, hematite in particular, 
is often found in places where there were um, like hot springs and, and geysers. Uh, so like around Yellowstone. And, and so that is an indication of water. And so that's why they're pretty excited to be in this area studying these. So just by way of an example, compare how similar the geology is uh, on Earth and Mars. So Utah, Mongolia, and Mars, A, B, and C on the columns. So what they're looking at are these, they're called iron oxide concretions, which form little spheres. And look at how similar they are across the board. Um, very, very, very similar. Let's take a close-up look at the one of my favorite Mars features, which I'm gonna to have to sketch, right? They're called Mars blueberries. <laughs> How awesome is that? And they're hematite spherules and they're tiny. So this photo is 1.2 inches. And so these little guys are like 2.87 millimeters, you know, tiny little guys, but they're, they're mostly perfect spheres of hematite. And you can see the the bluey purpley colors in them too. So one of my favorite Mars features. And now let's look at just some of the landscapes and soundscapes, sounds on Mars. So let's, um, let's listen. That just gives me the chills that we're listening to Mars. It's very windy most of the time and that dust in the atmosphere, you can see that. So here's another shot showing the redness, the hematite and the iron oxides in the soils. Um, very dramatic, so, so severe. And you can really tell it's wind scoured. So now we're gonna zero in. This is the landing zone of Perseverance, which is very significant. If you look here, what do you think you're seeing? So it landed right around, I believe right in here. This is one of their main goals here. And the reason is this is an old riverbed and Delta here. You can see that form. And the reason they want to be there is because this is what it, this is a shot right there at the landing spot. Um, there's a 10 meter measurement there. Those are stratifications in the soil depositions of mud over time. So that would be the place to be looking for signs of life at the edge of a delta. Here's another shot of what those, those um, layers look like and why that's an important spot to study. Okay, well, let me go find, find you guys. I'm gonna come back to gallery view now. All right, so pretty mind blowing, yeah? So we'll have to cover, I can cover some questions here. Grace, can you help me with some of the questions so I don't lose them? Yeah, we had a question of what, about where you got this, where the, you got the sound from, from Mars? The, the NASA, so um, Grace is gonna put some links. Um, in fact, she already did. So more information about Perseverance the, and, and also the, um, oh, I, Alex put that. Grace is going to put, let's see, should be in here the Mars NASA website. So mars.nasa.gov, I believe is what it is. Um, Grace, you can pop that in. Um, has all of that on there. You can download sounds, you can download the full videos. Um, they give it all away, it's fabulous. Um, thank you, Alex, for sharing the NASA Perseverance website too. That's perfect. Um, 
Great. Anything else? Let's see. Okay. Nope. So what we're going to do now is let's let's sketch Mars. That's really fun. So I'm going to set this up. So um, my uh, document camera is going to show my my sketchbook, and then I'm going to put some of those photos back there. Up. And while I'm setting that up, um, one of our viewers. Alex has been studying Mars in school for a paper. And I asked Alex if he wouldn't mind sharing some of the things he's learned while I get set up. Thanks, Alex. Oh, wait, let me spotlight you. Hold on. Um, and I have to make you, I think, let's see. Add spotlight. There's Alex, hi. Are you guys in, you're, you're, you're south of us, aren't you? Oh. You have to un we have to unmute you. Let's see, I can't hear you. Uh-oh, we don't have sound, Alex. Uh -oh. It looks like you're, you were unmuted, but you just didn't have sound going. Now can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, now? yes. I turned it down. Um, I've been doing, as Roseanne said, I've been doing a project on Mars for my school, and I found a lot of interesting things about perseverance and ingenuity. For example, uh, NASA has hidden a bunch of Easter eggs inside of perseverance. So, there was a, they hid a message which says, Dear Mighty Things. I'll put the link in the chat. In the parachute of perseverance uh, and one of the tracks on perseverance is shaped like DNA. I'll put that link in the chat too. Wow. Oh, wait. So they hit the, 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 the dare mighty things. Is that what, what it was? Yes. Oh, okay. That's the greatest motto ever, ever. Um, and they literally hid things. Like explain that a little more. Cause that's like, I'm super interested in that. I think that the parachute as someone put in the chat was Binary. It was in binary with the colors on it. I think a computer scientist somewhere, I'd have to open the article again, and it was looking at that and figured it out. That is so cool. I didn't know that. Wow, you're learning a ton. Um, Fantastic. All right, keep talking though. I'm going to do my screen share. You can keep talking, then I'm going to start setting up my shit. I share. I, I and then I'll turn it off when when you're when I've got that set up. So um desktop. Anything else to share? Um something interesting that oh thank you for posting that link in the chat. Something interesting that I found is that you might already know is that because Mars's atmosphere is not as dense as, for example, Earth's, they cannot, uh, Perseverance and other rovers cannot use only parachutes and heat shields to go down. And, but the atmosphere is dense enough that they cannot just use rockets. So they use a combination of the three, but yeah. Wow, that's cool. I didn't realize that. I mean, of course, we, we read that the, the gravity is, is less, but of course, we didn't think about what that means for deploying a mission and parachutes and everything. Awesome. Very cool. Well, I might come back at the end and ask you some more questions. So um, I'm going to unspotlight you now. Thanks, Alex. That was really fun. I know I'm completely excited now about um, about Mars and everything. So I'm spotlighting myself again. Okay. Oops. That didn't work. 
Let's see, there we go. Okay, that worked. All right, now, Grace, can you tell me we are seeing my notebook and the, the shot of Mars? Yes. Cool. So I, I already did my metadata just to save time. And um, as you can see, I did it a little differently because there's two moons. See, I, I always draw a little um, sunrise and moon phase um, symbols. So I drew two little moons, the wobbly little Phobos and Deimos. And I, I put their, their transit times. Um, and then the latitude and longitude um, that it's really, really windy. And what the elevation is minus 4,500 meters and the temperature and that it's really dusty in the atmosphere. And then I always start my nature notes, you know, writing what I'm observing. We're in Gale Crater. It's very windy this morning. And, um, you know, I'd say a 25 knot wind kicking up lots of dust and it's really cold. So that, those were my nature notes. And now I wanna sketch, um, do some sketches. Um, what I, I would probably wanna do, I wanna, I wanna ground us, like, where are we? Um, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a quick um, sketch of the planet and the locations of the, of the two landing zones there. And I just freehand it, you know, feel free to grab a circle if you wanna, um, you know, do a, or, you know, a, a form, you know, to, to, to do a circle around, but I, I freehand it, or I, I might do a few dots first, which I, I did already here to try to get a, a more perfect planet shape. No, but that's not too bad. Um, and so what I want to do is mark the equator here. And so, um, so Gale cr Crater, I'm gonna exaggerate a little bit the size here, um, is there. And then that, I wanna get that plane, it's called the Isidis Planitia Plane, which is right you know, across here. Well, there's that, there's that feature here. I'm gonna kind of scrabble in a little bit there. Lots of, I don't have time to like, do all the craters, but lots of impact craters down here. Um, you know, fewer up here, that plane, but let's say the edge of this plane goes up like this. Oops, just made a little, little um, blork there. But just getting a little bit more features here. And then the, the to zero crater I'm gonna mark here. Um, so uh, zooming out here, I want to I want to sketch the the Jezero. Definitely want to sketch the Jezero uh, uh, Delta, that that amazing thing. So I want to kind of call that out. And then I want to one of the things I really like to do is I want to I'm going to put that map of the, um, oh, hey, I think, Alex, you guys might not be muted again. Um, Grace, if you can help them mute that. Somebody's not muted. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that map where the perseverance went over, excuse me, where curiosity went here. And let's take a look at that. I'll come back and add color to these probably, you know, toward the end after I kind of get my, um, get my bearings as it were, but let's look at that map. Um, so um, let's see, I'm going to, so what I do, it's like, I have this really bad habit of um, like when I start drawing something, I, I maybe, I, I don't get the, the proportions right. And what what will happen is is it'll go like completely wonky. So I tend to do you know those of you who have taken classes from me, I, I map out what I want to sketch with dots so that I make sure that I get it more or less right before I commit to the page. But before I do that, what I want to remind myself too is that I want to do a a Mars scapey toe. So I'm gonna I'm gonna draw my 
Mars Gate Veto box, just to remind me, and we'll come back to that. Now, this is wet, I've just drawn there. Um, and I, I also, another bad habit I have is to do that because I'm like, I wanna remind myself, um, I'm, I wanna do that so I don't wanna draw too far down there, but then it's wet and I'll end up putting my hand on it. Um, so I'm gonna cover that, hopefully it won't smear too much. So I wanna just get this, this map down here. Um, uh, so I'm going to start here at the landing zone and I'm just going to sort of do a rough dots here. Ah, see, um, I'm going to have to curve around and put it here because I didn't get my proportions right. Now I could redot that by doing this. Maybe I'll go ahead and put the, the landing zone here and I'm gonna change this curve. So I'm gonna have some extra dots, but that's okay. And loop that up here, there, I like that better. So now when I draw it, I think I can, I'm not gonna to try to be exact here, but looks like it went crazy there and then climbed around here and around here, did that. So, you know, it doesn't have to be exact. We're just trying to get a, a feel here. Okay, and then here's the landing zone. So let's call this, um, so this is the um, curiosity. And here it is here. So here's the little marker. Um, there's a little tiny icon of, of the, the, the rover. So it's like it's got six, six wheels here. Let's, um, let's draw the little rover in there. <laughs> totally. <laughs> That's funny. Um, and then, so I can quickly just mark some features here. So the edge of the, uh, this, this feature here, the Bagnold Dunes, Ralph Bagnold was a famous explorer in North Africa during the um, early part of the 20th century. Um, I'm just doing very rough sketches here. And I'll come back and add features. I think this is largely shadows, although it is dark gray. Um, I think we're, we've got extreme shadows in here. So, um, so these are the Bagnell Dunes. And, um, you know, we can, we can mark this is Yellowknife Bay, because something significant happened there. We would maybe put that in there. Um, uh, was it, oh shoot, it was, um, yeah, four point, was it 4.2 million year old? I'll have to go back and double check that. Um, uh, rocks, billion, I said million, billion. <laughs> e, not M, B. Yeah, so the Earth is like 4.6 billion years old. Um, Mars is similar. So these are really, really old rocks. Um, so marked here, let's edge here. But I can come back and, um, you know, add more or features if I want later. There's that interesting, like really dark crater here that must just be a deep crater or it could be an artifact of the images. I don't know for sure. Okay, so then over here, let's, we have a basic sketch in here. Oh, I know, before I 
before I jump over, um, this, this um, Aeolus palus is important as a feature. Um, very interesting uh, feature shows up from really far away. It's, it's a, a, a kind of a plane that has a really strong light and dark side. It's not exactly, it's hard to, hard to describe. I'll have to look up more about um, exactly what um, the palace is. Um, okay, so let's, so we're gonna, we'll have these to come back to. Grace is also going to put um, a download in the um, chat showing the, um, all of these images that we're gonna be sketching, you're gonna have a copy of. Um, so don't feel like you have to rush, um, but I want plenty of time to, to do some, some more details and do some, some color. So um, this is the, the Delta that I wanted to be sure to sketch now here um, at, at the Jezero, um, Jezero crater. Um, So I'm going to add some, actually, I stopped myself in time. I was going to add some, some writing here, but then it would smear because I'm going to put my hand over it. So let's, I'm going to get this delta in here because that's really significant. So this river kind of comes up like this. And then it's got all these fingers. and features. Because this is one of the more important things that are, is going to be studied by uh, perseverance. Get some of that elevation uh, or uh, features in here. And we'll come in and, and color these as well to add more depth and interest. Oh, those, those craters are interesting, aren't they? And look at this one right here. Ooh. I could just kind of delve into this forever. I mean, it's, it's really mesmerizing this, this landscape, but I, I think I'm going to try to stop myself because <laughs> I want to come back and, um, and color this. So this is an ancient, we'll call it a delta um, in Jezero crater. And so coming back down here is where I would, um, I wanna mark um, the equator. And um, this is the Isidis, I-S-I-D-I-S, Planitia, the Isidis Plain. And um, this is Jezero Crater. And this is the Perseverance.
And then this is the Gale, G-A-L-E. Oops, I almost crossed that. Gale, ooh. And this is the Curiosity. Great. So this gives me a nice um, kind of get a, uh, already getting an overview of, of, of the Mars space, um, space, I mean, uh, <laughs> landscape um, there. So when we've got our map um, and, and I can put, I think it was 15 miles. Is that right, Grace? Was that like 15 some odd miles? of the, the route, I'd have to go back and look at my, my, uh, no, my <laughs> presentation. Um, but here, I think I'm gonna, I think I totally want to, I wanna add these guys because they're so cute. Um, I mean, who doesn't wanna sketch Mars blueberries? So, plus the, they'll be really pretty to add color to. So let's just do a, a couple of guys here. So let's say this one was the one that was 2.7 millimeters. And they were collected down here. So um, we'll put blueberries. And we'll come back and add some nice hematite colors there. Um, let's see. And then we want to add a quick, uh, you know, John Muir Laws calls these landscapey toes. Let's call this a Mars scapey toe. Um, of course, I just did that again, didn't I? I, um, I, uh, wrote there, I'm gonna to have to let that dry. So I'm gonna put some shading in here to help create this as a, you know, render this as a spheres. So we want a little bit of shading, which, which I can add in the watercolor too, but, but these have such pale colors um, that I didn't wanna to go too crazy with dark shadows. Um, that'll get me started. And let's get that. Let's get the landscapey toe here, or Mars Marscapey toe. Sorry, because I want to do this. Whoa, this beautiful, beautiful um, setting sun and the blue. I want to try to capture that blue with the watercolor. So I'm going to kick, take a slice out of here. I'm gonna make it a little, zoom in a little bit. So there's a really nice composition on this um, sunset, isn't there? And there's kind of two parts here. There's a mountains way kind of in the back. And they're very kind of lightly defined. And then we have the, the sun. Actually, those go up just a little bit more than, than I depicted. Yeah, I'm going to give that a little bit more. So I'm going to go in and, and hopefully capture that beautiful blue glow there. And I want that to dry before I, I pop a lot of, a lot of uh, water on that. So I think 
what I'll do is go back, let's see. Zoom, I want, I'm gonna add color to my Mars. Okay. So I'm uh, got my little mini paint kit. Um, those of you who who don't know, I I pretty much go with this minimalist kit. Um, I create all the colors I, I want and need with the the three true primaries: uh, cyan, blue, which um, well cyan, magenta, and yellow. Remember, red isn't a primary color. Um, magenta is your primary. And I can make red from magenta and yellow, but you can't make magenta, you can't make yellow, and you can't make the cyan blue. So I use, um, uh, and this is all on my website as well, um, but this is manganese blue and uh, equivalent to it from um, green leaf and blueberry of magenta. And um, they use, a, I think it's, I can't remember what she calls it, but it's equivalent to say a, a neutral yellow. So it's, um, Areolan, very, very similar to areolan yellow. And then I have a very dark blue, like an endanthrone blue, and that is burnt sienna. And then that's just my dirty yellow for mixing. And I just, let's see, realized I don't have one to grab my, my little, um, my towels. And for for dabbing my my paintbrush. Um, let's see. That's kind of obscuring part of it. So, Oop. and. I'll go ahead and put that there. I don't normally put my paint on top of my um, my page, but hopefully this you'll you'll be able to see it more. So the way I I'm going to create this kind of tan reddish tan um, Mars color by using my pure yellow, and then I'm going to drop in just a little bit of my burnt sienna to create this Marsy tan color, kind of orangey tan. And then I'm going to just kind of do a bit of a, just do a wash to get that going. Uh, I'll probably have to do multiple layers to get the colors and features that I want. And I think I'm gonna do it a little darker I'm gonna, I'm gonna pretend like the sun's shining from, from this way. And I'm gonna leave that to dry there. Um, since I've got this here, I can, I can go ahead and, and um, lay a, a background wash on, on this too. Um, since it's that's going to be its kind of base color, leave that kind of. I'm just being real messy with it. I can do the same over here and just use this up, um, but this over here is going to be a lot redder. Um, so I'm I'm not even going to worry too much about it because that's going to be really red. So. Let's see, what would I do next? Um, I can add some features here, um, some of the darks and um, interest, and I'm gonna give it a little bit more red too. So that's just the burnt sienna. I'm going to uh, make this more so it looks more like the red planet. And I'm, I'm 
keeping it spotty, hoping to approximate some of the, the <laughs> crater impacts maybe. I can go back with my pen too. Um, and then the other thing I wanna do is create a shadow. So I'm adding blue to the burnt sienna to create a black because you'll see in a minute how much better that's going to look as a planet if we give it a, a hard black edge on the on the dark side. Any questions, Grace? Nope. I'm curious how many people are sketching along. Uh, I don't want that. Um, that just starts making it look more like a planet, right? So, oh, that's a little dark. We have a couple people sketching along. All right, um, and then I might take a little bit about a little bit of this dark and and I'm just going to drop in just a few little bits, but I'll probably go back and um, ah, later and add a bit more with my 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 uh, pen um, just to give that a little more you know there's a lot of texture right and maybe a little bit more muddy that up I'm leaving the plane nice and flat though so that looks really dark now but it's going to dry much lighter all right let's um let that settle and dry and um, let's see, where's my, what do we want to do? Um, let's do the Delta. Um, I'm going to add some color in here. Um, Cause it's, it's, this is an enhanced photo, but it's, it's really got some beautiful, almost blues and magentas in there. Um, and also these, these darks, but the darks I want to do last. I don't want to do that quite yet. Um, so I might even just, I'm going to what, like, just change my mind. I'm going to wet this with just water here so I can get, um, so that it doesn't, I don't get hard edges. That's a lot of water. So I'm going to let that um, dry for a second while I pick up some of this here. That's the nice thing about using like burnt sienna and natural pigments is um, it, uh, it's easy to move it around um, before it dries. It doesn't stain like some of the, you know, phthalo blues and stuff. Get that to dry, I'm gonna drop in this is gonna look really pink at first, but I'm gonna be adding some blue over. I, I just wanted to get some of this, this lovely colors in here. A little too dry. And, ooh. that to focus a little better. All right, I'm gonna take some of the pure blue and drop that in. To delineate our uh, water course a little more, more there.
And I think I'll put in some burnt sienna now. Oop, forgot that crater. I think I'll let that dry and then I can come back and add more details with pen as well. Um, just leave that. I have a tendency to overcook things sometimes just keep going back too much. Um, let's let's tackle the uh, the land the uh, Mars Scapito. Because um, that's actually going to be a little bit of a challenge there. Um, let's see. Some tissue. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting a wash on here and dropping in the blue. Let's see, let's see, and then quickly try. I'm going to go ahead and put magenta around it. And then I'm going to later come back and put an orange, probably an orangey wash on, on top, very light. But let's see if I can nail this. It's always hard to get these glowing sunsetty things it's always it's good to practice so always fun to include in your field notes and journals so so first thing i'm going to do is is pop in this this blue so i can i can get this glow it's nice and wet Going to pull that out with a little more water. All right, now let's go for it. I'm going to do a pretty wet magenta here. Blending it into the uh, blue. What I like about these colors is that they're they're non-staining, so I can lift them and move them around a little bit before I'm totally committed. This is drawing so quickly because I'm I'm in the you know desert here and it's very dry. I probably got too much water, so I'm going to get some. Um, I'm going to get some blooms here, but I can uh, come back with a wash, um, and and even that out a little. I think that'll dry pretty nice, though. I'm going to leave that to set. Um, in the meantime, let's do our uh, let's do our blueberries because I've got some color there. I think what I'll do is. You know, they've got this purpley blue thing going on, but I'm going to put the blue in first and I'm just going to go straight. They're very pale, so I don't want to overdo it. Getting a little bit too much water. And let those you let those dry. Um, 
there. Let's see. Sometimes I have a little fun um, on the uh, on my metadata here while I'm thinking about it. So since it's it's dusty daytime, you're going to get uh, the a reddish daytime sky. So I'm going to enhance my sun with um, a tiny bit of Mars dust here. And um, so the sun is, is not going to be like super yellow. It's going to have that bluish dusty tinge. So <laughs> that's fun. You can see there. Um, okay. This is drawing pretty well. I kind of got overcooked it on the side here. Um, I'm going to add to give that hematite. Um, pinky purpley color. I'm just going to go ahead and put the magenta right on top of the, the blue and see how that creates a nice texture there. That's already dried out, but there we go. And then I can go in and add when that dries, maybe I'll just Add a tiny bit on the edge here. The way the light is, um, my shadow is going to be like so. A little bit of texture with my finger. That works. So see how I'm just dot, dot, dot. So now it looks more like a rock. And getting some of my, my black here um, just to enhance the, uh, I'm just enhancing it. It'll pop, pop a little bit more if I put a little shadow under it. Ah, I put my arm right on the wet Marscapey toe. Um, with the sun kind of directly overhead, I was, I really should have only had a shadow on one side. So we'll just pretend it's a direct overhead. All right. I'm going to add some, so this is very red at the, at the site here. Red and very dark. So let's throw some burnt sienna in here. And I'm being fairly messy because I, I want, um, you know, I don't want it to look like I, I painted it in perfectly. Kind of want that mappy look. Um, and then while it's still wet, did I get it soon enough? Uh, yeah, so sometimes I, I was, I was going to try to add craters with my pinky, but that didn't work. Um, so I'm going to use up some of this black coloring in here, and I'm going to have to keep going back to enhance the dunes and get these edges. So, but I, I want to do it slowly so I'm not overcooking it. And build that color up a little better.
definitely don't want to overdo it. Let's come back in here while this is kind of drawing and I'll think about it. Because the blacks in that photo are, are shadows. They're really, really, um, I'm not sure they're totally a feature of the landscape. So I don't want to overdo that. So I'm going to let this dry and keep building up. You know, I could go in and color these a nice bright red or something. I might do that. Um, but let's let's add let's add color here that what I'm gonna do is a combination of burnt sienna and then a really cool color I got. I uh, actually collected and made my own pigment, well, excuse me, a uh, watercolor from pigment I collected in Namibia from a place called Burnt Mountain, which it's very Martian um, in nature, right? Look at this um, beautiful color. So dropping in this incredibly beautiful, it's kind of a, it's a purple ochre to give this, I want these, textures in here. So this is an iron oxide, just like hematite. And so that'll dry with, with more of a look of um, stippled rock that I wanted. And then this part, I want to, um, I want a flatter, let's take a look at that just yeah, so we can see what we're doing. Let's see, where'd it go? There we go. It's kind of like a, a gunmetal flat gray. I don't want it to pop out too much. And then because of the light and the blue, um, the, the middle mountain is actually gonna be slightly lighter because it's still in the, the sun. So I wanna create a pretty flat, gray-y, blue-gray. Hmm. Maybe a little bit more. So I'm, I'm taking the dark blue here to create. Ah, a little bit. There, there, I like that. Any questions, Grace? Nope. So one of the challenges with using these strong uh, natural pigments like ochres is it's a little harder to get a flat wash because the particle size is pretty big, um, but that's not bad. And then what I think I'm going to do is give those medium mountains just a slight pinkish hue. See this, this um, I accidentally created some hard edges in here, which I really didn't want, but that's okay. I can wash over them. All right, so that's shaping up. Maybe I'll just quick do, um, we just got a few more minutes. I wanna come back and do some Q and A. Um, so let me quick, I'd love to do those arrows. What do you think? Red, let's do kind of, red arrows so you can see. So here's magenta. And now I, I need some, just to drop in a little bit of yellow.
Now let's see how good I am at painting them in the lines. Guys are totally testing me here. Wow. There's that. One blur. Okay, so I'm going to stop um, because I think we, I want to wrap up, but I think that's going to be fun. I will come back um, and maybe with my pen, I'm going to add some more darks and define the landscape better in here. Maybe add a little bit more, add some craters, same over here. Um, but overall, I think I'm, I'm fairly happy with that. Um, and add notes. Oh, I forgot an arrow. Well, I've still got the red paint. So I'll come back later and do that arrow because I need to stop. Okay, so, all right. Now let's everybody come on back. And um, if you want, go ahead and turn on your, um, your videos. If you wanna chat, ask questions. Um, have at it. Anyone want to share? Let me know. And questions. Ooh, a 3D model of ingenuity. Ooh, that's fun. Um, oh, that's cool. Is that the GIF that spins? Um, of the ingenuity helicopter. They on the NASA website, there's they've got a, a GIF of, of the helicopter taking off. It's really fun. Any comments or thoughts? Um Oh, good question. Olivia, you got me. So Olivia says, where is zero degrees longitude? Um, I was having a hard time finding that um, at the last minute. I realized I knew where the equator was, but I didn't know where they set the, you know, the, the, the uh, you know, baseline, the datum for, uh, for that. So we'll take a look and I'll, I'll see if I can find the answer to that. Or do you know, Alex, you let me know. Um, any other thoughts? Shares. Oh wait, okay. Ken, I'm gonna I'm gonna spotlight you, Ken, and go ahead and top so you pop up. Nice, like that. Well done. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Oh, nice. Oh wait, you did the helicopter. That is awesome. I love it. Oh, and nice that you did the delta. Um, you know the the other view of the delta. That's fun. I like that. Um, go ahead and I'm trying to spot. Yeah, I hope that'll pop up in the in the recording. So that's really that's awesome. The, I Thank like you. the sedimentary rock by uh, at the edge of the Jezero crater. So I Definitely. decided to do that, and then I got your blue sunset. Perfect. Yay. Um, yeah, that sedimentary rock is going to be super important to the science, the astrobiology that's that's coming out of this mission. So well done. Very Thank cool. You. Anyone else want to share? Thanks, Ken. Let's see, I need to remove the spotlight. Um, I'll share mine. Okay, let me see. I need to go back to gallery view and see who that is. Who's speaking? Name, Pearl. Pearl, okay, because I'm going to yeah. spotlight the people so it pops okay. up. Okay. okay, so there's mine. Let's see if we got that. Okay, awesome. I love um, then, that. And then I put the circles there so that I could kind of research what Alex was saying a little yes. bit more. That so is that I'd have more information. And then the previous page has got all the notes. So my question on my notes is that you mentioned something of 127 billion 943 miles. Is that from Earth or from the sun? Earth. Earth. Okay, that's and it. that was. Um, I'll share some more of that um, information. That the the that was the distance that uh, Curiosity traveled, and of course, it's different each okay. time a land or lands because it depends on where Mars is in its orbit away from the Earth. So it's a right. when you look at some of the distances, it's an average. 
Um, okay. But, but that was an actual because that was a, an, you know, that was a mission. So. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. So who, who did we have next, Grace? Um, Sharon, let's see. I just wanted to mention, I, I don't, my camera is not working, but I just okay. wanted to mention as a point of um, interest that the ingenuity has a fragment the size of a postage stamp that was taken from the Wright brothers first flyer. And it's on the undercarriage of the ingenuity. And I just find this callback in history. I don't know when I read of it the first time it just brought Tears to my eyes, the first powered flight on Earth, the first powered flight on Mars. I hope ingenuity flies. I know. <laughs> it would be so <laughs> no. oh, thank you for sharing that. That is incredible. I didn't know that. Ah, that's just mind blowing. The um the thought that's gone into this. Um so let's see. Uh looks like Olivia and then. Put in the chat if you want to share so Grace can spotlight you next. I just want to make one more little mention. Oh, sure. And one of the Apollo missions, they did the same thing, uh, landed on the moon with a splinter of um, from the Wright Brothers flyer and a bit of the, the canvas on the wing. So just, ah. you know, they are so thoughtful about how they do this. Now Wouldn't I'll mute cool? myself. Wouldn't it be cool to let somehow let Orville and, and his brother know? <laughs> so Olivia, go. So this is colored pencil. I, nice. I'm still not comfortable with watercolors. And I didn't have any uh, earth tones. So it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll have to share with you. I've got a uh, I've got a colored pencil from um, made from iron oxide pigment from a, an old mine in England. I'll, I'll, I've got some pencils I'll, I'll give to you next time I see you in Tucson. Um, th then you'll have earth colored pencils, yay. Um, thank you, let's see. Grace, who else would like to share? I'm um, just, um, if you wanna share, um, pop, let's see, I've got the gallery back up, pop, uh, just wave and unmute yourself and and then I'll spotlight you. No, nope, nobody else. Okay, no worries. Well, I hope everybody had fun and thank you, Alex, for your additional information. That was awesome. Um, it was tons of fun to do. So thank you, everyone. I'm going to close this with one more um, one more quick slide. Um, and then Grace is going to put some something in the chat as well. <laughs> that didn't work. There we go. And so this is just kind of how we wrap up. Thank you for coming. And um, so if you enjoyed this free virtual field trip to Mars, consider a contribution to the tip jar. Um, and Grace is going to put that link in the chat. And um, Thank you all. I had so much fun. And um, I hope I'll see you well on the, we have the, um, uh, right, cartography um, May 1st, and also the feral watercolor uh, workshop, how to make your own pigments from paint from pigments you find yourself. Um, so that's coming up April 24th. And so message me if you have any questions about that. So um thank you everybody go ahead and you know pop pop uh on to say goodbye everybody have a wonderful rest of your weekends good to see so many of you so thanks hope you had fun <laughs> yeah all right thanks everybody that's great thank you thanks wonderful fun. thank you thank you thanks to everybody for your contributions that's what makes it so much fun mm -hmm.